Okay, it's 9.57, 5 May 2024. As you can see, that's my screensaver on my computer. That's a Quasar GX3632. Pretty much my everyday carry when I get a chance to be an everyday carry. Meanwhile, let me show you some pictures I've taken. That's what I, well, okay. So I took these two and put them together into that picture right there. So that's my deciphering tool that I got from the internet, all right? And here are my pictures, which I've taken. I have to start here. This is about a Sharp GF 505 SB. SB meaning it's black color. The ST is a silver color. That's basically the difference between these. Okay, so I just want to show you that you get the keyboard, it's easier to... I'll zoom in as I need to. But that's the front of it, okay? I started this on the uh, 3rd of March working on this. Alright, so here we go. That's the front, that's the top, and Anyway, I don't know all these controls, but that's your volume, your bass and treble, and your recording controls over there. This is your power knob, this is your karaoke knob, and then you got your AM and FM, and wide uh, mono, and I mean wide stereo and mono, and, and then other auxiliary buttons here. Okay, so, alright, and then that's the tuning end, that's the input end, which has got your... AC 100 volts or 15 volts DC input. Okay, there's the back, and there's what this is. This is a Sharp GF 505. Okay, this is the input connection. So you have your phono, your line in, your line out, external microphones over here, and I believe that's external speakers. And this is probably your beat cut. Okay takes 10D batteries, alright, I still haven't gotten to that part yet. There's the bottom. Take the screws out, that's what they look like, they're all the same size. And then you open it up, you take a picture. I don't know what this blue thing is, but I found two of them inside, we'll get to that later, for what it's worth. Okay, so here's the inside of the, uh, the front. Another picture, just because, I don't know. Then here's a picture of the inside of the back, if you will. And looks like that. And then uh, I uh, discombobulated, or removed the uh, speaker wires, I'm guessing. And because I had two sim... Okay, the, there's a yellow, a white and a yellow, and then two black ones. So then I... Anyway... Um, did that, then there is more wires here, I separated that, and then there they are again, just to be sure which ones are which, and where they plug into, and then um, like that, and then unplugged it, took a picture, and then here I labeled these, because I didn't know if they're specific, I didn't want to cross them, so I labeled them, left and right, so when I plug them into the circuit board up here, that would be left and right, okay, because I don't know if it's a common ground or not. I didn't want to mess that up. So, anyway, so here's the inside of this, and I took this apart as well, but I don't know if I took pictures, and then that's right. And this spring wasn't connected to anything, okay. I think it goes up here, but it wasn't connected to anything, all right. And this is the... Uh, 18 centimeter, 4 ohm, 5 watt, max 8 watt. And over here is a tweeter, 5 centimeter, 4 ohm, 10 watt. And this does have a um, does have a capacitor on it right there. No dropping resistor though. Okay, and I'm sorry, it does no. Just a just a six decibel per octave crossover. It doesn't tell you what the doesn't tell you what the value is, just those numbers. Okay, this is a picture of the old, or as I got to it. As you can see, it's got tar all over the tire, and 
the uh, or the either and anyway the, okay. and here's just another overview picture of it in its entirety and okay and then just another overview of the overview all right why not here's a picture of this side this is helpful in putting something back together I just like to get that view and then we have this view all right so that's always helpful to know where screws goes wires go and so on and so forth so a uh, straight on view just because I could so I can locate my screws and such and then of course this let's see here to undo this plug you have to remove the uh, the tape counter so you can't just pull that plug out because the tape counter is in the way. So you have to learn how to do that. Alright, so another overview picture. And then we remove the, uh, the four screws, I believe it was, holding the tuner window in place, which holds those in place. <clears throat> and we take another picture to locate our upper screws for the tape deck up there. There's only four screws holding the deck in, but... And then again, I found another blue thing, so now I have two of these things. I don't know what these are, where they go, but they are inside. Maybe somebody can tell me what they do. Alright, and then I'm pointing to... Okay, I unplugged the power plug for the something, so I took a picture. That's where it goes. That's the orientation of it. That's the wires. Alright, and then... Um, I took a picture of this just because I could to be sure of... I don't know what. And then here is, okay, when I took the tape deck, the screws out, the upper, the two upper screws are the same length, but they're, this one is shorter than those, and this one is longer than those in that orientation. So, the two long, the two medium sized screws at the top, the one short screw to this side where the motor is, and the one extra long screw to the other side, all right? That's what it should be. So there's another view of that. Okay. Then we had to remove the top cover. Okay. And then we took a picture of, uh, okay, this is a wire that's like a ground. It goes there, it plugs in right there. So take a picture. And then, yeah, here's it. here it is again. It's, it goes um, right there on this tab. There's a tab. Okay. Let's see what else and then um, what are we looking at here I guess this is the recording bar switch I don't know why I took this picture but it's nice to have another picture and then here's a picture of okay the tape counter is still in place we're pointing to something pointing to something I don't know what maybe just the wires that's why I use that as a pointer Okay, so here, all right, so here I have to have this knowledge of that's where the uh, tape counter wheel is, and here's the one screw that holds it in place. It's a sheet metal screw. And this is also helpful for knowing about that. All right, so what do we do here? Don't know. Well, we're just holding the tape deck. Okay. And here we're doing, okay, here we have removed, here we have removed the the tape counter so we can unplug this plug from that circuit board okay and then here's just an overview of underside of the tape deck without the tape deck in its place so you can see the recording bar switch and the lever that actuates it all right and then we have what do we have here? okay this is the underside of the tape deck right as it is do not re remove these two screws they go to your solenoid just leave them in there you don't need to remove it okay but I did but I didn't know I'm letting you know you don't have to take these out just remove those and be mindful of the spring and the plunger so just take the plunger off don't lose the spring and you'll be golden okay so and so here is this is the other side of the tape deck still with the old belts and the old everything okay 
Then here we remove to the, now this is where I didn't need to go all this far, but I, I did. I, you have to remove this to get the flat belt off, okay? And then it been in, okay, so here we remove that, remove that. Now I did some extra steps here, which I didn't need to do because I couldn't do it because in other models, I can't remember which one it was, that I had, I removed the, okay, here's an upside down view of that belt and how it's on there, okay, and another view of, of no, I don't want to do that, another view of that, okay, still dirty, all right, so here we flipped it over again, we took another picture of everything, okay, so here are my new uh, idler tires and, you know, the, you know those pieces, right, so here we took off the, um, I think this is the auto stop belt. So there's the old auto stop belt. Okay, and then we took the flywheel out. All right, and the flywheel is definitely dirty. And then, okay, so now in the past I have removed this screw, and there's three screws holding this gray metal plate on, which is in the, underneath all these levers and such, to facilitate to clean the capstan tire. Okay, it's easier to remove that, but it's hard to do on this model. I didn't know that. So that's why we have, there's a picture of this. Here are the three screws that hold it in place. One, two, and three. This one here has a grounding strap on it to something. I don't know. Okay, so now we've proceeded to remove these parts here, which we did not need to do. You don't need to do it unless you really want to. Um, so we remove this, be mindful of the spring that it goes on there, and also that spring there, make sure you still have that. I would like to replace this idler tire, but you can't do it unless you have a clip remover, and I didn't want to mess with all that, so I didn't. And so here, let's see here. So you have to take that off to take the, uh, to take this one off, which is this one right here. You don't need, yeah, there it is. I took it off, be mindful of the spring, okay? Because I'm trying to get to this, to remove that by the other side by taking the three screws out. But anyway, and then I got this part off, okay? So there it is, so now I'm still trying to get to this. See, there is the one screw and there's two more screws hidden under here, but I could, and then I got, I, I recovered that little washer. But I could not get this one off. Okay, if you could get this one off, then you could have access to that. But I couldn't get this off. I pushed it down to no avail. I could not get it out. So then I discovered the springs. I even removed this. I took a picture of removing the springs, but I want to point out that this spring, that spring, that spring. See this tab right here? The spring rests on that tab and it goes on. There's another tab here, not very well seen in this picture, but that's where those two springs, that's where the springs go. But they are not attached properly. One, two, three, and then also four. This one's the only one that attached properly. It's attached there and attached there. So I think someone was in here before because there's no way in the world if those springs are compressed to have that come off. So anyway. And then here is the other side of this tape deck, all right, with those parts removed. And I just could not get to removing this and the three screws to take that out to properly clean it. So I went through it at the top and I proceeded to put these pieces back in, all right. So, so let's see. So wait, let me go back one. So what I take this picture for? No, okay. That's just, just another, okay. So here I went in, so here is my denatured alcohol in a little baby food jar with a Q-tip and I went through, I don't know, 50 or so Q-tips cleaning that out. All right, there's the Q-tips, the denatured alcohol, all right, the, I don't, I, that's for drinking, that's for lubricating and that's for that. And there's a silver I need to repair someday, just needs a new motor. 
But anyway, so we cleaned the holy heck out of that. And then here we used a pipe cleaner. I don't know if you ever heard of a pipe cleaner, but we used a pipe cleaner to clean, dipped in, dip the pipe cleaner into the uh, denatured alcohol and run it through as best you can. And then when that end gets dirty, simply cut the end off and put in some more of the new pipe cleaner. You don't have to keep, the pipe cleaner gets, keep getting shorter, but you should keep having clean pipe cleaner to put in there to clean it out with, to get that black stuff out, all right? So here is the old driving belt from the uh, capstan motor to the flywheel, and it's nearly, uh, nearly 14 centimeters, all right? Here is the new belt I put in, it's nearly 13 uh, centimeters. So that's the new belt that I put on. That's the uh, capstan to flywheel belt. All right. So here's a new capstan belt on. All right. And of course, all the um, flat pieces have been restored. Okay. And then this thing put back on, and everything, all the springs in place and such. All right. As we see here, all the springs have been restored. They're all straight in. They're not flopping out. Okay. Then here we uh, here we put in the new rubber. Okay. And um, all right, so and here's another good view of the the new rubber installed. All right. And we had to clean the heck out of the. See, do we have a picture of that? Oh, we, we cleaned the underside of this gear. We cleaned this tire, we cleaned that. We had to clean the underside of this gear with a white gear, as you can barely see it, the white right there. That, that was very dirty as well. And then, let's see here. Okay, this is, um, anyway. And, I don't know why I took these pictures, but there they are. Oh, this is outside, just trying to get a good view of the cleanliness of this tire and idler tire on the capstan. Okay. So it's very clean. The underside of this is very clean. And uh, another view, just trying to get it, oh, I still couldn't get all the black off of there, but oh well. And, um, just another picture, okay. And here are the speakers, okay, so that side, this side, this is how the wires go, all right. And here we took it out and, you know, I don't know if you can see, that's dust. And dust on the speakers. When you look at these things, when you're buying them or whatever, you see the dust through the windows. It's not the coloration of the speaker, it's simply the dust on the speaker. And here's the dust on that speaker. That's both speakers removed. Still dirty. Now clean. I tried to get a picture of the voice coil. It's a rather small voice coil. Maybe I didn't measure it, but it looks to be about a half an inch in diameter. It's kind of small, I thought, for such a large woofer. And I tried to get another picture. I couldn't get the light anymore. But one more picture, okay. There's the pretty uh, thing with, again, my labeled. <laughs> Okay, so there it is, and then here's the inside of this, uh, before, yeah, it's dirty, before I cleaned it, all right, and then here, I, this, I use a, I use a paintbrush to clean in here without damaging stuff, but to remove dirt and debris and such, and then what do we got here, what am I pointing to? Okay, this is the recording bar switch which we cleaned. Okay, so there's the recording bar switch, and that's how you actuate it. Okay. And then this is what? I don't know. I can't remember. Oh, it's just the top. Okay, so here's the top. These have been, I guess, cleaned by now. And I changed these. These were black on one side, now they're silver on the other. So I, I flipped them over to be unique to see what they look like from the top when I get the cover on. And this is the this is the uh, auto stop belt. This is the old one, and this is the new one. So let me do that again. It's just a tad over, say, 93 centimeters, 
and the new one is 90 centimeters. So, all right, and that's where it goes. It goes there. So I put a new belt in. Okay, and then I was going to use those. I said, nah. So this is the um, this is the counter, the old counter belt. All right, so the old counter belt, and this one just to uh, see here. Yeah, that's the old counter belt, and so I put a new one in. This is round and all that, so put that on. So got that here. This is before I put the tape deck in. Just an overview of that. Here I'm putting a tape deck in. I still haven't. I put the plug in, but I haven't put the. Okay, that's why I took this picture. To put the plug in, you have to put the plug in first, then you can put in the um, the tape counter. But you have to remove the tape counter to put that plug in. You cannot remove that plug with the tape counter in place. All right. So, uh, <clears throat> and then here I am. I'm playing a cassette and uh, testing it out. Oh, and I'm. I have my. Uh, what about a two millimeter flat tip into the motor which is that okay so that's the motor that's in this model that we have been listening to all this time playing my test tape and here's another picture of you of just if you're trying to find a motor that works this is what works it's a two wire it has this kind of connections on the back side here I have not verified the wires. I should have taken a picture of that, but uh, that's what I know. Wish I'd done that. Oh well. Here again, I'm just yeah, so. And now we're back to the front. So now let me wide this thing out. Okay. Wide this out. I believe that's the end of the tape there. Let's see if it auto shots off. Hey, it auto shopped off. That was like perfect timing, let me tell you. So let's uh, see which one's rewind. This is record. That's rewind. So while I'm rewinding, what can I do? Oh, I know. I can get out the. Uh... Okay, so here is the. Uh... Here is the happy front of this thing, <laughs> which has been cleaned. Okay, it's been cleaned. And um, there's the door, okay, and the spring has been reattached, okay, so the spring helps it come out, whereas the, anyway, they work in unison, but anyway, and I couldn't adjust the air thing here because this is just, this is uh, rusted in place, so I couldn't move that, and I wasn't about to break it but so here it is with all of its stuff we, we haven't gotten around to attaching it because I wanted to run through my hundred some odd pictures all right so let me put this down here and uh, let's see here so so what so what okay so and I want to show you that see I'm rewinding it about halfway okay so that's that. It goes this way as well. And uh, what song is that? I want to go back a song. So we'll hit the. This is the music search to go that way. Right, so it should kick off. It's been working. There we go. And that's. So if we go back. Wait. Okay, if we go back one more song be it my uh, music that I prefer or that I like this the Quan um, yeah this one here so here's the volume and you're not going to hear much of a volume difference but because I'm only playing through these little speakers here right but you give it full volume so there we go and let me stop this, all right, so hit stop, okay, take this out, all right, and then throw in, this is a 
I'll give you a few seconds of new, uh, new order. All right. Go. Hit. Okay, so that's that side, and then just whatever is on this side. All right. much for that. And then let me just take the camera off the tripod here. Let me get my famous um, whatever this is, Fleetwood Mac, and I'll give you a few seconds of this. Uh, this is a MA here. MAXG. I don't know if you can see that, but that's the MAXG uh, recording, and I'll throw this up in here. This has already been hopefully put back to the beginning, all right? And um, let's see here. so hit play. And I don't want to give you a few seconds of that. Now I'm going to take this off. All right. So that sounds right. I'm going to go back to my music tape, and I just want to show you one little thing that. I don't know if it'll work with the camera because the camera does have stereo mics, but they're only you know real close together on the unit itself. So we'll do this. We'll get 26 minutes. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> so we'll put this up here, right? And we already have this queued up supposedly, right? So there we go. And then hit play. And we'll now what I'm talking about is this button right here. Right now it's in stereo. This is mono, stereo, stereo wide. I'm going to see if I can get you to hear the sound of this by just putting it there. And that's mono. My stereo. And then this is stereo wide. That's stereo wide. You're not going to hear much with the bass on there, but that's stereo. Let me, let me see. Let me, let me go um, fast forward it a bit to the next song, <clears throat> which is my favorite piano music. Okay, if it, do, if it goes too far, you can hit the cut button, which does that. Yeah, it went too far. Well, Sometimes the music search works or not, but who knows. So, okay, there it went. That's not the right song. That's one song. Whoops. Oh, you have to be in play mode. There. Do that. Hit stop. Put it in play mode. Hit the music search. Okay. So, 28 minutes. Wow. No. Okay. Cut. That's close. Well, okay. It should have auto stopped. Let's see here. There it goes. And the few meters do work. I just have the piece of tape up there because this one wants to fall down. Uh, that's all it's up there for because this is not normally it's held in place by the tuning window, which I haven't put up yet. But. For those of you who like view meters, this has that. The 9696 has LED meters, but whatever. Okay, uh, so what was that? Oh, yeah. I'm showing, okay. This is in stereo mode, so that's mono, right? Mono, stereo, and then stereo wide. So I don't know if you can hear that difference without using external microphones, but that's still stereo wide. That's stereo, and then this is mono. Okay, so back to stereo. So, and that's at full volume, so it might be a little bit distorted, especially coming through these little speakers. Anyway, I'm thrilled with this. I can't wait to put the rest of it back together and uh, clean out the battery compartment and run it on batteries. And that's been my review of this model here, which, which will look like. Oh. 
Okay. Which will look like. Give me this thing. Which will look like this when I'm fully done with it, right? It looks like that there with this in front of it and so on and so forth. All right, so good day, everybody. Thanks for watching. It's been 30 long minutes, but I'll do another one for Facebook. This is just YouTube, all right? So, been my review of working on this. Been very satisfying to, and lucky to get this working model. There's a dropout on the tape because I, this is my demonstration tape. It's not the tape I really listen to all that much. But it's music I can put on YouTube. All right, it, I got from YouTube that I can play through YouTube. So, thanks for watching. Good day, everybody. Hope you enjoyed. And maybe there'd be less of these for sale because everybody would be buying them and using my video as how to repair these things. So, good day. Bye-bye. Gotta go.